Today, the plan was to dive another site at San Benedicto called The Boiler, which happened to be the favorite of several of the people who were on the boat. Because conditions were expected to be rough on that side, the boat had actually spent the night moored at the canyon, and the plan was to move over once everybody was up. Yesterday was all deep, and the uh, visibility was kind of so-so. We did see hammerheads, mantas, all the things, but a bit of a rough day diving. So each day they have the general food plan here and you can request other things. They've been uh, good about, I don't eat fish, Jen doesn't eat meat, and they've always had good alternatives. We're uh, going to relocate over to the dive site today in about an hour. We arrived at the boiler to find that once again, somebody had beaten us to the dive site. That meant our dive time was gonna be eight o'clock and we also found out that they weren't kidding when they said the seas were gonna be rough over here. And here we have Taters in her natural state in a boat lying down, <laughs> trying to make everything else go away. And then <laughs> That's all the yesterday. Ooh, congratulations. That's because they were tossing you off the boat. It, it was a little touch and go there. I thought we almost lost the coffee maker. And we're really remote. I, I don't think there is a... Uh, coffee maker store out here. The boiler dive site is out in front of the rock you can see in the background. It's basically another really, really deep site and this time we wouldn't have a bottom. Everybody on the boat was diving with nitrox, which is basically a slightly different gas mix. It lets you stay underwater longer without having to go into decompression, which is something we're not allowed to do as recreational divers. But the downside is you can't go too deep. If you go too deep, the gas mix actually becomes toxic and you can seize up, which is not something you wanna be doing at 100 plus feet of water. Jen often suffers from seasickness, but fortunately she found that boning works really, really well for her. So after taking that and resting a little bit, she was fired up and ready to go. The harder trick was actually getting onto the Zodiac, which was the little boat that took us out to the dive site. Basically with the waves coming in and the boat going up and down, you had to kind of time all your moves so you didn't, you know, fall over and break a leg with 90 pounds of gear on your back. As always, things became better once we were underwater. When everybody was in the water, the boat had 18 guests split amongst four dive guides. That was a lot of people to have stacked on just a single dive site, and this was probably the one where I noticed it the most. Unfortunately, visibility once again wasn't great, so we mostly stayed close to the rocks because once we went away from them, we basically were completely off in the blue. Because the swell was hitting the rocks, it was also resulting in up currents and down currents, meaning we really had to keep an eye on our depth and make sure we didn't end up going too low. We are, of course, old hat at surgery conditions like this due to how it is diving in Southern California. The trick is basically just not fighting the surge. On the plus side, sharks really like it when the water is moving around like this. So we had all sorts of them going back and forth on top of the ledge. Once again, I know people get nervous anytime sharks are around, but this particular type is pretty much harmless and it's just cool to get a chance to see them. Most of the time when I've seen sharks underwater, they are off in the distance and taking off because they don't want to be around people. And of course, in what was quickly becoming a pattern for this trip, we had extended visits by mantas where they basically stuck around us for half an hour plus. This was my favorite shot of any of the Manta footage that we got for the entire trip. Basically, it was circling around, saw our bubbles, and then swam straight through them. All this was happening down at 80 or 90 feet, and in addition to having to really watch air consumption, because you go through more air the deeper you are, we really had to watch that we didn't go too deep, because when you have one of these really, really cool alien looking creatures staring at you from a couple of feet away, it's really easy to get distracted and not notice that now you've dropped down at your, and you're at 100 plus feet. And because we were on the side of a big cliff, we were looking down significantly deeper than that. The standard maximum depth for the usual nitrox mix is 111 feet. The person in the background is actually retrieving their weight pocket and they were down low enough, it actually freaked the guide out quite a bit. And of course, in addition to the sharks and the mantas, we had Jen's favorite, massive schools of fish.
There was actually a fourth dive that I don't have any footage for. After three rough dives on the boilers, the decision was made to go back over to the canyon in the hopes that maybe we could get away from the swell. We had a couple of people that had missed dives due to seasickness. The boat relocated back to the other side of the island where the canyon dive had been located, and we found it was significantly calmer there, but when we went to dive, we dropped into some water, and the best way I can describe it is imagine putting on your mask and then dunking your head into a bucket of horchata. We had visibility that was just maybe a foot or two, which was an absolute nightmare when you've got six people all bouncing around. Also, due to rules of the area, we weren't supposed to have flashlights on us, and Jen and I had been following that rule, so it was very stressful not losing anybody. This is also where we learned that our guide Marco would not abort a dive for practically anything. We lasted about 20 minutes in under five foot visibility, which is a nightmare when you're dealing with a group of six people all kicking around. Finally, another one of the guests aborted the dive and we all happily came up. After that, they didn't hang around. The initial plan had been that we were going to relocate to Roca Partida. However, due to conditions at San Benedicto, they decided that that little pinnacle without any protection was probably gonna be pretty rough. So they changed the plan to have us go to Socorro Island. When dinner time came around, we found that once again, the crew had gone above and beyond and everything was decked out for New Year's. Sorry. It had been a pretty rough day on everybody between the diving and just the tossing of the boat, so we all retreated to our rooms pretty quick and did our best to fall asleep. The next morning, we would be diving at Socorro.